Here, we will begin to identify potential ethical issues in the language of science from this article titled Impact of Shale Gas Development on Regional Water Quality, which first appeared in the May 16, 2013 issue of the journal Science. In this article, we will be looking for potential ethical issues that could arise from the scientific study of the impact of shale gas on regional water quality. We will look specifically at the language used in the article to help us locate issues worth further ethical consideration. Later on, we will use the ethical dimensions of scientific research approach to help us think about where else to look. There's potential for significant ethical issues because the article really deals with two issues of immediate importance to contemporary society, namely the development of their energy sector and water quality. The first sentence here of the background section really indicates to us that natural gas is of significant importance to regions around the world because of its ability both to be a relatively clean energy source and as a way to help reduce their reliance on energy imports. As such, we are immediately told that this issue we are about to look at has significant political and environmental importance. and it is often linked to a variety of ethical considerations, mainly for these reasons. So as a transition fuel, methane is also important because it helps us reduce uh, emissions of CO2 from the heavier fossil fuels such as coal, uh, fuel oil, uh, oil, etc. It helps us reduce uh, the emissions of significant criteria pollutants including nitrous oxides, ozone, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, uh, particulate matter counts, and lead. And it also helps us reduce uh, mercury, which is specifically uh, put out from coal burning. So hydraulic fracturing as a way of extracting difficult to reach methane sources has really the further appeal of now being economically feasible. The process of hydraulic fracturing, though, is really a high-pressure process intended to crack rock about one kilometer below the surface. And as such, this powerful process presents environmental risks to underground discharge of the wastewater initially used as hydraulic fracturing fluid. As well as the accidental spills in terms of the wastewater management um, and what goes really unsaid here, though, is in stating these environmental risks, uh, what are these risks and how do these risks also pose problems to people exposed to such contaminants? The understanding here, though, is that environmental risks are almost always linked also to human risks, uh, human health risks and livelihoods, as well as uh, risks to other modes and forms of well-being. As it is stated in the advances paragraph, the most common problem is with faulty seals around the well casing to prevent leakage of methane. However, the incidence rates of faulty seals is in the range of only about 1 to 3 percent. Nevertheless, methane has been detected in these areas around well drilling, but there is a significant controversy, and whenever we see terms like significant controversy, we're bound to find some ethical contention as to whether or not the methane that was detected was actually due to the drilling or if it was due to other natural processes. Without data as to what the conditions were before drilling, what they refer to here as a pre-drilling baseline, or that is normal conditions, it is really difficult to determine the current conditions from what are considered to be normal conditions, as methane has been known to enter into the water table naturally in some of these areas uh, even before the drilling occurred. As we will see in this article, methods of measuring methane isotopes were actually developed to help us answer some of these questions. Wastewater management of the used hydraulic fracturing fluids is going to dominate environmental uh, debate both now and in the near future because wastewater contains both significant chemical additives for the fracturing process, as well as vast quantities of heavy metals and radioactive contaminants that were brought up to the surface from deep underground. 
as wastewater can only be reused so many times, and as the gas wells um, and fields begin to mature, there will be growing pressure on finding better strategies for managing the wastewater. So this isn't a problem that's going to go away. In fact, it's a problem that will likely intensify. So looking more specifically at the contaminants found in fracturing fluid, the urgency and risks associated with wastewater management become readily apparent. According to the article, wastewater management can be made more effective through improving the significant areas of research, that is, better modeling of what happens to the contaminants, uh, better models of understanding how it flows through um, underground uh, passageways, increased long-term monitoring of the wells, and the dissemination of data, which includes improving transparency in uh, fracturing fluid contents. So the paper identifies three significant impediments, however, to peer-reviewed research into the environmental impacts of well drilling. As they currently are, first, it's the confidentiality requirements that are really dictated uh, by legal investigations um, and by trade secret laws and as to what is really legal uh, in terms of um, what these companies have to reveal. Second is the expedited rate of development, which is making it difficult to conduct studies within a reasonable time frame, and the limited funds available for research into the impacts of horizontal well uh, drilling for shale gas are also very um, limited, as it says here, but also without funds, there's no way to really go out and test this. So this becomes a problem because the burden of proof of harm is really being done uh, throughout this process by a wide range of stakeholders that are local to drilling sites, as opposed to the burden of having to prove that no harm is being done, which would perhaps necessarily be put on the drilling in the energy companies. So as we can see, there's uh, perhaps possible problems that could arise that even remind us of Pennsylvania's adverse environmental legacy um, from the abandoned coal mines. And what we want to begin to do is avoid that um, perhaps long-term legacy and, and problems that we are still dealing with and try to get ahead of them. So overall, while the article does not identify specific ethical issues, potential ethical issues are represented and uh, presented to us through a lot of the terminology of uncertainty, risk, uh, controversy, um, pollution, uh, environmental responsibility, um, long-term issues which think about responsibility towards not just um, you know 10 years down the line but very much future stakeholders including uh, generations that might not have been born yet. So when we begin to actually contextualize this in the language uh, in the con conceptions of ethics we can begin to see that this is actually a rather uh, loaded article. As we can see, we've highlighted a good deal of <laughs> the terminology in the, uh, the review summary here. So as we go through this article, I want you to pay very close attention to the kind of scientific arguments that are being made, uh, the kind of terminology and the parameters of uncertainty, how risks are being defined, and how terms even such as appropriate, uh, what is appropriate to the situation, uh, can at their sort of appearance seem obvious, but when we begin to push a bit further, uh, what the terminology appropriate means might not be so obvious.